Hi everybody, it's Chef Todd. Uh, this is uh, the last opportunity I'm going to have to speak to you before the big Thanksgiving day here in the U.S. And if you're somewhere else, because our Carefree Cooks community is global, just take the Thursday to be thankful and cook a huge meal <laughs> if you want. Cook way too much food if you want. If that's your strategy, that's fine. But today what I really wanted to talk to you is a last minute thought to put in your head is the idea about portioning. How you dole out this food to people. And really, portioning st should have started a week or two or more ago when you started uh, with your plan, your menu, who you're inviting, estimates of how much each person should eat. But here's a big way to save yourself some of the time, effort, and expense of over-portioning, over-cooking. Now, of course, a lot of people are telling me here, welcome everyone. Hey, Jana. Jana is with us. Edward was, was telling me, uh, I make leftovers on purpose. You know, I, I like to have those things left over. I remember as a kid, one of the things that I looked forward to so much was the uh, open face hot turkey sandwich. My grandfather used to take a, a, a slice of Wonder Bread, put the turkey on it, douse it with gravy. <laughs> it was great. So sometimes, yet you're planning for that. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Maria. Hi, Heather are all with us today. So if you are not, put my phone down, if you're not planning for leftovers because you like that, or plan for your leftovers more purposefully, there is a difference between weight, volume, and each, okay? So here's the, the way that you're gonna look at this. There, there's no way to uh, portion turkey by volume. Uh, you know, nobody's gonna have a cup of turkey. So as you're carving the turkey and you're stuffing it into a measuring cup and then portioning it onto somebody's plate, they're going to think you're insane. The turkey obviously is measured and portioned by weight. You know it because you went out and bought a certain poundage of turkey. Or again, if you're anywhere else in the world and you're having a feast for the holiday, any holiday and friends, it's your roast, it's your lamb generally bought by the pound. The next thing is, let's say you have a sauce or a gravy. Well, okay, you can weigh the gravy, I guess, on a scale, and you can not do each. <laughs> you know? Gravy doesn't come in cubes. Gravy is going to be your volume measurement, and that's where you need to figure out a certain number of milliliters, a certain num number of ounces or cups gravy for, per person. But the one I wanted to get to, and the one that really saves you the most uh, food, the most effort, you know, it's such a shame to waste food, uh, even if you you do turn it into uh, leftovers, but it, it's wasting the time and effort that, that gets to me. So it's a trade-off in my mind. Sometimes you can overcook because it's easier to just make a big vat of mashed potatoes, right? You just take all the potatoes, you whip them up, you put the big vat uh, on the table, and you let people portion themselves. That's out of the cook's control. Uh, what I like to do is the each, and it takes a little bit more time. And I mentioned mashed potatoes. What's going on in my kitchen today? And we've been very busy. Let me show you some of the things I've been doing. First of all, check this out. This is cold because it came out of the oven a while ago. Okay, here's my butternut squash and apples roasted in the oven. This takes about two hours or so to get them really soft. I'm going to puree that all together and make my roasted butternut squash and apple soup. But I'll tell you what, there's a lesson in here also. Let me get on a tangent for a minute because I generally, when I roast them, I cover them with tin foil so that I don't let the moisture escape. Can you tell on here where the tin foil didn't cover? Do you see the edges are all dried and burnt? Well, this is all moist. And, and not caramely. I mean, I talk about it again and again and again, direct conductive heat, indirect convective heat, but that's not the story today. The story is about my twice baked stuffed potatoes because it allows me to do the each on the potatoes rather than putting a big vat of potatoes on there. So back here on my mixer, my KitchenAid mixer, I have previously baked potatoes at the same time that I roasted there we go. At the same time that I roasted my butternut squash, and I'm going to put them in the mixer, put a little speed to it so I can break them up. There we go. We'll add a little bit of fat, and I've got some melted butter. Well, looks like my butter recongealed a little bit while we're sitting here. Well, it's still soft. That'll be good. Let's melt in a little bit of the, the butter. 
Oh, easy there, Bronco. Oh, slow down. We don't need to get back to the stable yet. Uh, next, I've got some sour cream. Do you like those sour cream and chive mashed potatoes or uh, potato chips for that matter? How about getting the flavor into your mashed potatoes where somebody else doesn't have to do it for you? Next. One of my favorites, there it is, goat cheese. Can you imagine a goat cheese and sour cream stuffed mashed potatoes? Notice my measurements are always very precise. <laughs> very important to measure precisely. Uh, there's another piece that's in there. Give it a quick whip and then slow it down. So what I'm doing here is as the person cooking the meal, it gives me an opportunity to know that I can make one potato per person. Or they're heavy eaters, I make one and a half potatoes per person. But nonetheless, it gives me a count, right? It gives me an each to know that I'm not gonna run out of food and I'm not gonna wildly over portion as well. So what I've got, as you saw me do in the mixer, uh, is my potato mix. The, one of the reasons for this, the thing that I hate is the potato surprise. You know, when, when you're served a potato at the table, you're supposed to carve it open, touch it. Oh, it's really, really hot, thus the hot potato game. Then you're supposed to put the butter in it. Then you're supposed to put the sour cream or whatever else you want to put in it. And it just turns into a table side mess. This is another great thing about this. You do it for your diners as well. So now that we've got my potato whipped up, we have one last thing to do, which is a whole bunch of fresh chives that I have gotten and chopped. You can never have too much chives, I'm going to say to myself. Uh, paddle back on the mixer, which is always easy to do. And lastly, I've got my combination of salt and pepper, already salted, already peppered, <laughs> so that I don't have to do both. A quick mix, because I don't want to mash up those chives. Stop it, and let's give it a taste. Get a spoon. Because it's all cooked, right? There's nothing dangerous in here. I haven't put eggs in it or anything. And that's good. It could use a little more sour cream, maybe a, a little more tart. And I'm going to play with it a little bit. But what I've done is I have the potato skins, right? This is where the potato came from. I will scoop out from the mixer, fill the potato skin. This can be frozen even a week ahead of time. A week ahead of time, it makes it so much easier to do. Where's my towel? <laughs> there it is. Uh, so imagine being able to make the baked potato for the people at your table. Yes, it, it is. You're trading labor for food, but if you love cooking, if you enjoy the process of it, if you enjoy the, the, the passion and sharing of your talent with people at your holiday table, then you will always trade time in the kitchen for wasted food. I mean, I know I do. I've done the each on so many different occasions. I've done the each. I've made little lasagnas in ramekins. Uh, one year we had a really fancy French party. I made little creme brulees for everyone. I've done au gratin potatoes in little, you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, ramekins, right? I have these things in all different sizes. So I've done uh, au gratin potatoes, everybody gets in each. I know I just gotta make 10 of them. I've done, like I said, little lasagnas, I just do it by the each. It is trading labor for food, like I said, in that regard, but it gives you an opportunity. So the thought I wanna leave you before, I wish you a very happy Thanksgiving here in the US and a very happy giving of thanks day everywhere else, no matter where you are, before my last opportunity to wish you a really healthy and and happy time with your family. I want you to think about the volume, the weight, and the each. This saves you time. It saves you money. It gives you precise portioning as well. Uh, we've got a lot of great stuff coming up this holiday because Thanksgiving in the U.S. isn't all the holidays. We got another five weeks or so to work together and really put some depth of flavor into our cooking, into our food. And coming up next Monday is Cyber Monday, the one day of the year, the day I get to make the boldest, craziest, maybe most creative offer of the year to get as many people started with 
the Web Cooking Classes membership and to reward the people that already do. So if you want to find out uh, uh, more about it, there we are. Go to uh, webcookingclasses.com slash VIP because I'm told that I'm going to send out an email message to exactly what the offer is, but I'm being told that email could crash because Cyber Monday is getting crazy. So this way, if you go to webcookingclasses.com slash VIP, you will get an alert and the page before it actually goes live. You'll have it in your pocket is what I'm saying. If you're curious about the crazy offer I'm going to make this year. So thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me. Don't forget the volume, the weight, the each is the key to portioning no matter what you're doing this holiday season. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy day of giving thanks no matter where you are. And it's Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your cooking success. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.